Okay, so today, are we ready? Okay, so today is April the 19th, 2021, here at Always in Stitches, in the sewing room, all geared up, ready to sew. It's going to be a big block today with lots of small parts. It's nothing we haven't already done, it's just that they're going to be smaller pieces, okay? Um... Let's see, what else did I want to tell you about today? Well, I'm going to be sewing on my new sew machine again. And so you're going to get to see how that performs. But last time we talked, I didn't have my blue tape on. Remember that? So now I've put my blue tape on. And why would I do that? Well, because I want to know where my quarter of an inch all the way down my throat, uh, all the way down the cabinet, where my quarter inch is. Now, if I'm sitting here, this is off a little bit, so I'm going to take this off, and I'm going to undo that, and I'm going to scoop that right along the edge of that ruler. Now, so see how I've, and I've measured, I've, I've kind of looked at my ruler and made sure the lines on my face plate and the lines of my ruler are parallel and that everything is nice and straight so that when I do lay my ruler down, I've got a straight edge there. So now I know all the way down the edge of this tape is my quarter inch. Now if I wanted to move over a quarter of an inch, I'd lay my ruler down a quarter of an inch and I'd mark where my sewing or my needle line was. And then I could go over another one and draw a quarter of an inch on the other side. But I'm not going to do that today because I don't really need those. All I really need is to see where my quarter inch is because I'm going to make, I don't know, 7,000? No, maybe not that many. Okay, what's 12 and 12 is 24 and 48 and 24 is 28, 6, blah, 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 blah. You know, like 100. So, uh, half square triangles. So I don't want to mark all of them. I don't want to sit and mark and mark and mark. Of course, I'd only have to mark half of them, but still, I don't want to mark them. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this corner. The corner from corner to corner is my quarter inch seam. So I'm sewing away a quarter of an inch from my seam. So my seam is going to be from corner to corner. So can they see that, Peter, that the corner of the square, this corner right here, is at the edge of my foot, not at the needle. See how that would go right into the needle there? No, it's at a quarter of an inch away from my needle. And then this corner down here is a quarter of an inch away from my needle because I know that this line right here is a quarter of an inch. So that makes it so I don't have to draw the lines, see? And as long as I'm sewing and putting that corner right along the edge of that tape, I know I'm sewing a quarter of an inch from the uh, seam line. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this and take this out. Sew on my ender here. Oh, I've got a knee lift. I forgot about my knee lift. And I'm going to sew on that. And now I've got all these that I've sewn this morning. You now were what, busy. I know. Now what some people do is they just let that hang and they turn it around and sew on the other side. Okay? But that gets in my way and I don't like that. So I'm going to cut them. And I love my handy dandy cutter. They make them in all different styles. I just happened to made this one myself out of one of those uh, necklace things that they have at Clover makes them. And there's a little razor blade inside here. And then there's these little notches that expose the blade. And so uh, you just sit that in there. I, I kind of finagled it. I bought this little star at the hobby store and then this was an old antique spool I had. Well I first just had it on the spool but then it was always top heavy and it was always flipping over so I had to glue it onto a base so that it wouldn't flip and flop around. So now I'm just going to go through here and I'm just going to cut those apart just simply because I don't like 
all this hanging down. I like to be a little bit more, I don't know, not organized, but a little bit more in control of where my blocks are hanging. So, just going to take the time to do that. I've saved some time in not having to draw, so I have, you know, plenty of extra time. It's not a race. It's just a fun, fun day in the sewing room. You know, the world can be as mean and evil. We had that shooting at the FedEx thing here in Indianapolis, and that really flew, that really threw me for a loop. I couldn't get my tongue to say what I wanted it to say. And so I've been a little upset all weekend. But now I'm in my sewing room, and I'm just going to let that all go and wash away. And I'm going to going to enjoy myself. I, this is my zen zone. Is that a, is that even a thing? A sure. zen zone. Okay. Yeah. I, I know. Just as long as your pin cushions are set up to the proper feng shui. Okay. Facing the facing the whatever yes. do and and all yes. that. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. So I'm I'm raring to go. So now I'm going to just here's my seam line. Uh, here's my seam line from corner to corner. I've already done one quarter inch away. Now I'm just going to do the other side. So I'm going to sit that machine, machine the same old way. Oh, I'm sewing on the same one. Duh, Dawn. You know, when you turn it over, you've got to make sure <laughs> that you're sewing on the other side. So let's turn these around. Flip and rotate. Flip and rotate. Okay, here we go. Come on. Okay, and then I'm just going to again feed them in and so feed them in and so until they're all sewn together. So you're going to make all your half square triangles at the same time, even though there's different colors. Here's color seven and eight together, seven and eight, four and five, two and seven, and two and six. Now, how did I know what to put with what? Well, it's right here in my book, see? And I forgot my color chart today, so I had to write them down. And so here it says, and on, uh, behind this little paper, it tells me which two colors to put together. And I'm making 12 of this set, 24 of this set, 12 of this set, and 24 of this set. Now, does that mean I have 12 of each one of these? No, because for each pair of, of blocks, See, for each one of these pairs of blocks, I get two. So if I need 12, I really only need six squares of this color and six squares of that color. So when you're counting them out and it says, okay, fabric seven, you need 12, and you don't have 12 squares, don't freak out because it really only takes six. See what I'm saying? I know we've been over this before, but it never hurts to just revisit what you've already learned, uh, just as a little reminder, okay? So don't get freaked out if you don't have enough squares because you really only need half of what it's calling for because for each pair, you're going to get two uh, half square triangles. So I'm going to uh, cut these out, cut these off, and then it tells you right in the book what size these finish to. Now you're going to have to add how much? A half an inch to the uh, finished size because that's your seam allowance. So if it were to say that you needed, um, I'm just going to pick a number, three and a half, that's the finished size, then you should trim them to four. See what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? That's so funny, isn't it? 
Have you I'm, ever noticed I I'm, say that a lot? I'm picking up what you're putting down. All righty then. I'm okay. So now I come to my favorite ruler again. This is the quilt in a day. Quilt in a day. Half square triangle square up ruler. And uh, I got to sneak a peek and see how big I've got to make these. Oh my goodness. It's a weirdo measurement. Is it one of those ones that's not a quarter and it's not a, or it's not a that, half, it's not a whole? It's not a half, it's not a quarter. It's it's, like a, is it an eighth? Nope, it's this one right here. I already have it marked. Well, wasn't that lucky of me. I must have used that a, a time oh or two goodness. before. So now I'm going to take this uh, ruler and I'm going to cut from corner to corner. corner to corner I just love this melon color don't you mm -hmm. that really is the uh, um, the punch every quilt needs a little bit of a spark a punch color and I think that's this for this one so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna take my line that I've marked off because it's not, it's not a half, so I can't use this end. And it's not a hole, so I'm gonna use the whole end, but it is two, I'm just gonna tell you, if Moda fires me, they can. Uh, two and three quarters. So right there is my three quarter mark. Two and a quarter, two and a half, two and three quarters. I just put a piece of tape across two and three quarters. I lay that on my sewn line on my stitched line where the thread is. I'm gonna trim that up, trim my ears. Peter, do you need a trim? Not really? Not okay. really, not okay. anymore. Not anymore, okay. Yeah, if you've been in lately, Peter got a haircut. He looks very professional. Now, I do have to tell you something about Peter. I gotta brag on him a little bit. Friday night was our sew night with the employees. And two of the employees wanted to learn how to do needle punch. So I said, oh yeah, I'll teach you how to do needle punch, no problem. So they gather up their supplies and they sit down at the table and both of them just picked it up just like it was second nature to them. And they, Peter almost got his whole thing done. And it is a cute little bunny. I'm sure he'll show you pictures when he gets it completely done. It is adorable. And he even used wool thread, uh, wool flosses actually, uh, to do the bunny's tail. And he made it uh, textured. He made it the loops higher than the other loops so that it had dimension. So cute. He's a very good student. So I think that I'm very proud of him. And Nancy, she finished hers. Nancy finished hers too. She was doing a snowman. snowman. It looked amazing. It was. Everybody did such a good job. Now I do have to I do have to admit though, um, when I had the needle, uh -huh. it was in the one position. Right. Okay, when I went and did the bunny tail, I you know, you you suggested put it in the five position. So I put it in the five position. So I put it in the five position. Well then when I went back I put it back to the one position. Uh-huh. Well, I was looking at Nancy's needle. Nancy's needle was in the one position, but her needle was a lot shorter, the tip. Yes. I looked at mine. Mine was three times the length. Uh-huh. And then this is after I got quite a bit done. So I fumbled with my needle. I moved it in positions and moved it back, and then the needle jumped back. So the whole time, although I had it in the one position, it was actually set in the five position, so I just rolled with it. So my loops, oh. my loops are a lot longer. However, it still is going to look good. Well, you know, I was looking at it today and I thought... Has but we couldn't figure out why I was burning through so much floss yeah. and why I was running out when the pattern said I only so needed so much. So there was something going on with the needle? It just, uh, I think it just got stuck. Like it was stuck. It didn't, it didn't pop down. It didn't hop down. The tip oh, didn't pop down. Oh, the spring. Yeah. Maybe it wasn't in the spring correctly. Yes. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Well, very observant of you, Peter. But now I know. Now you know. I thought it looked like you had done six strands. I thought, why in the world is he doing six strands? But that makes sense now. It was just longer yeah. loops. 
Huh. Okay. But so that needle punch, wow, that was so fun. Was it? Yes, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And it was Good. one of those ones where I would say, no, I'm not going to pick up a new craft. No, I'm not going to do it, you know, and I'll, I'll, I'll do it when the time's we right. We strong-armed him, to tell you the and, truth. Well, the funny thing is, Nancy was like, well, do you want to take it with me? And I was like, well, you know, people were nice enough to to get me set in the right direction. So uh -huh. it, that really helped. Good. That really helped. Good. Your video helped, too. Good. Your whole beginner's guide to punch needle that's on our channel that Where people can I watch. Where would I find that? Um, YouTube, beginner's guide to punch needle. At what address? Or, you know, what? where, where at? Always. Always, okay. In. In. Stitches. Stitches, Noblesville. Yes. Uh, Love that video. Yeah, so you just go to YouTube, click on YouTube, then type in the search engine, always in Stitches Noblesville. We should pop right up. Then you can go to our playlists, right? Mm hmm And then you can find it there, or you could just go to our videos and scroll through all of our videos. But we do have quite a few. So it might be easier to go to the playlist and find it there. All these videos that we're doing for uh, My Favorite Color is Moda, those will all be in one playlist all together. So you just click on the one and it'll expose all of the videos that we've done so far that have to do with Always in Stitches, My Favorite Color is Moda. So that's kind of neat. Now, last night I was watching Floss Tube. Floss Tube is a division of YouTube. And one of my people that I watch on Floss Tube said that she had the beauty filter on her camera. Wait, <laughs> so did you I, say wait, did you say the booty filter? No, I said the beauty. Oh. Beauty. Oh, okay. Beauty filter. So I came in this morning and I was just so excited to tell Peter that we had to get the beauty filter. <laughs> he did not find the same humor in it that I did. <laughs> But I thought, you know, if we had a beauty filter, it might be better for you guys. <laughs> well, the nice it, thing the nice thing about YouTube is a lot of videos, uh -huh. like, you don't have to watch them. You can play the video and then just listen. What are you saying, Peter? I'm not saying anything. Yeah. <laughs> hey, listen, I even have fans that are cats that love my voice. See? They watch me. They love See? me. See? So what I'm going to do is now these are all set and ready to go into my block. And what I'm going to do is I just did a few of each color. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and let Peter have a break for a few minutes. And I'm going to finish these up and then we'll be back and put the block together. Okay? Okay. All righty. It'll be a few minutes. Bye-bye. Okay, I'm back. And Peter's back. So imagine that. Okay. I got some of the half square triangles done. I didn't go ahead and do them all. This will be labor intensive. Uh, so maybe, you know, one day or two you'll take to make the half square triangles and then another day square them up. And just take your time with it. it it's slow going, but uh, worth it. Uh, the smaller you get, you know, it takes up more to make a big block. So you have to make more pieces. And so we're going to make four blocks that look like this. This is number six. So, um, so it's hard to tell the difference between my number six and my number seven. But can they see that yeah. pretty good? Yeah, that one's brighter sitting on yeah, top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is all made with number seven. No, number six. This is all made with number seven for me. Now, if uh, Peter would just look behind over here, you can kind of see that this block here is number seven, using the number seven, and this block here is using the number six from this colorway, which is the Primrose Garden. The other colorway is the cookie tin. So it's a little deceiving and you've got to just really make sure you pay attention to your uh, little guide that you made yourself, uh, your little cheat sheet that you made. We're going to make four of the ones with the number six and we're going to make one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty
five, six, seven, eight with the number seven. And see how if you stand back a little bit and once the quilting gets in, this is all going to look like one whole piece. Well, why didn't we just do it that way? Well, because it's hard to match up a big solid piece with these little bitty pieces. That's a real advanced way of doing it. It can be done that way, definitely, but these would all be on the bias because this big long piece would be cut on the bias. There would be no way of sewing it on uh, otherwise. We couldn't do it like we do a half square triangle because we would lose our points here if we did that. All right, so I want you to notice this is the little bling in this block. In my uh, uh, cookie tin block, it's gonna be the orange, but it's yellow here, the little bitty spots of bling. So they make little butterfly looking things here and then they're just little dots around the center. And then here, it kind of makes like a little pinwheel stripe, uh, star, excuse me, pinwheel star right there in the middle. So there's a lot going on with this block, but we're going to just break it down step by step and it's going to be super easy, okay? So should I walk in front of you or should you walk in front of me? You walk in front of me. All righty then. Okay. So what I've done is I've looked at my book here and it really breaks it down real good, okay? First of all, we have four big gigantic blocks in the corner. So right up here are my, on my uh, design wall, if you could show my design wall, Peter, there are my four big blocks already set up, ready to go, okay? And over here on the uh, Primrose Garden one, it's the kind of the, I don't know what to call that, rosy pink color on the big outside edges, okay? For me, that's number seven. Uh, my number seven is my dark red. So number seven is going to be carried through all the blocks. This is uh, one block that we're going to make eight of, and this is the block we're going to make four of. So I've laid it out just like it has here in the little diagram. Do you see that? See the pieces? Hey, you got a phone call earlier. I did? Yeah. Your 4120 called. My 4120? What is that? Yeah, your 4120 called and said it feels neglected. Oh, my little <laughs> baby. Yes, I'm sorry. I take you home and sew with you this week, okay? All right. So, anyway, um, I'm going to make, and it tells me right here, I'm going to make four of these and eight of these. And also, the pieces you have cut out, that's what's going to tell you also. So, I'm just going to set it up, just like it does in the book, and then I'm just going to sew it in rows, just like I do all my other blocks. I'm gonna take this one and lay it on top of this one and sew. Now, I only have enough to sew one block here, okay? I'm gonna need eight of these. I would go ahead and sew all eight. I would make all the half square triangles and I would sew all eight of these together. I'm gonna remember to use my knee lift this time. I'm not going to pin this, I might be sorry, but it's such a small block. But I'm not really used to this sewing machine. So there's that. Then I'm going to take this piece, flip it over, and do this. Sew this one together. I'm not going to pin, I might wish I would have. But we'll see how it goes. I can always rip out if I have to. Don't always like to. I'm going to scoot this over a little bit because this machine, see my throat used to be right here, my uh, needle, because my throat was only this big. But now I've got this gigantic area here for when I do big, big blocks, big quilts, big binding jobs, whatever. Remember, I slowed my speed down because this is a speed demon, this machine right here.
Okay, so I don't confuse myself. I'm going to go ahead and I'm, I would make all these blocks. I wouldn't make those blocks yet because the colors, my colors are so similar. Now, it might not be that way for you because every colorway is different. But I remembered that this orange went down here in the corner, so I know that goes there. And I know that goes there because those kind of made a row and those made a row and then there's a row there. So I knew that went there. So now I'm going to, there's only two pieces to this row, three pieces to the other two rows. So I'm going to go ahead and sew the other two rows with their third piece before I go to my ironing board to press. And the reason I can do that is because this seam is not so close to my other seam that it's going to get in my way. Squeeze that out there so it's even. Did everybody watch uh, the funeral of the prince? What's his, what was his name, Prince Philip? I didn't watch you it. You didn't watch it? Mm -hmm. Did you watch it? I just watched it on YouTube. It was pretty sad. She had to sit by herself, you know, because of this COVID thing. I tell you, this COVID thing. Okay, now before I do this, I'm going to go ahead and do all these. That way, I can go to the iron and press everything at once. You see it's how I'm saving time there? So I would have made all eight of these, and I just wouldn't have sewed the rows together. Not that I couldn't. I mean, very well, if I would have wanted to, I could have. Now, I'll tell you something that happened the other day. One of the ladies who works here, her name is Deborah. She brought in a pattern. And she had gone out in and she had cut everything that it said to cut. Exactly like it said. She cut them all. All the blue pieces. It was a red, white, and blue piece. She cut all the blue pieces. She cut all the white pieces. She cut all the red pieces. And then when she went to put together, the measurements were wrong in the pattern. So she didn't have enough fabric to go ahead and fix it. So in that case, if you have a pattern and you in your head cannot figure out whether it really works out or not, get you a scraps, get you some scraps and do the block first. Like let's say it's just one block all over, like this quilt right here, this one right here, this little, uh, um, one we did several weeks ago. See how all the blocks are the same? If you weren't sure those measurements were correct, then I would go in my stash, get some scrap fabric, doesn't matter if it matches or not, and I would cut it like it says for one block and go ahead and do one block. Especially if you've never sewn from that designer before. Uh, and we're all human, you know, we all make mistakes. When we uh, print patterns, we try very hard to have them, uh, sew, people sew on them and, and uh, what's that called, Peter, when you... Pattern testers. Pattern test and uh, when you read something and make sure it's Proof all right. Proofreader. Proofreader. Proofreader and proof tester. We Editor. try and do all that before we publish a pattern, but sometimes it just gets... You know, it, it just gets all those halves and three quarters and five eighths and blah, 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 all start to look alike. And so um, it's just one of those things that happens. And when it is, it's aggravating because now she has to go buy all new fabric for that quilt because it was a kit and they only gave her just exactly enough to make it. Well, you know, if the measurement had been too big, that wouldn't have been a problem, right? She could have cut them down, but it wasn't. It was too little, and she had cut all of them. And they were 
half square triangle. What size quilt was she making? Do you it know? was just a small little wall Thank hanging. Thank goodness yeah. it was just a wall Thank hanging. Thank goodness, exactly. Because I would be. It was kind of a red, white, and blue flag with, you know, the yeah. red, the yeah, blue yeah, yeah, and yeah, the yeah. Uh, white were the stars. It was really pretty. Deborah and, loves the patriotic. Yeah, yeah, um, and I hope she doesn't get discouraged. Throws and table runners. Yeah, I hope she doesn't get discouraged oh, from that. She has so much patience. But that is, that is very discouraging when you cut out an entire quilt like we did this one you know but i had tested it so i knew i knew it was right yeah so you tested it cappy tested it every yeah we had lots of people and we had it. lots of people at moda testing moda it tested it before they even put it out yeah yeah that was part gotta of love moda yeah yeah gotta love moda moda is the bee's knees uh-huh I'm going to do my knee lift, get my fabric under there. Literally the bee's knees because they have Deb Strain that loves the bee's fabric. And she's got bee fabric. <laughs> so Deb Strain is the bee's knees. Shout out to Deb Strain. Moda is the bee's knees. Hi, Deb. She probably isn't watching. No. But if she should happen. Yeah, if she should happen. We'd be saying hi to her. We'd be saying hi to her. Get that? <laughs> hi. We'd be hi. Hi. <laughs> That's a good one, Dawn. <laughs> oh, my I'm goodness. I'm stealing that. Okay, you go ahead. Okay. So now I've got that. I've got that. Why do sometimes I cut and sometimes I don't cut? I use my little thing. Well, it depends upon how many, you know, how many mm -hmm. I'm doing. Now, we know that's not right because it's got, well, because. Doesn't that light color line up real nice? It does line up real nice, but look. Oh. These have to go that way, like that. So you must have the cheat sheet. Yeah, I have the book. We have more of these kits, and I want to tell you, I've been online looking because I want to see what everybody Nobody's else is doing. Well, not only do they not have them, they're prices. And they're only featuring, like, one, one or color two colors. Ways. Yeah. Now, we're not going to badmouth other shops because, you know, I mean. No, it's. They do we, all, they, that we all need all to thrive. Our, yeah, we all do our own thing. It's just the state of where the kits are at in the right, inventory. It's right. not bad mouthing. Exactly. And I'm just saying their prices. I don't know what you they're saw a adding lot of, in. You saw I saw a lot of, of variety in prices, and we were on the cheaper se uh, sector of all that. You know, so uh, I think we I think we include things though in our kit. We that, included the pattern that, and a lot of them didn't include the pattern, and we included the cheat sheet, the little thing that you can make your cheat sheet with. Uh, we just did all kinds of things. We were just really excited about this program. And, did it have a uh, bag? I think it did have I a. I think bag. we had it came with yeah. the tote. And I think it said always in stitches. Oh, and all the and we labeled all the fabric we colors. We did label, and that was a That's big a huge help. time saver. Wasn't that a big uh -huh. help? So we still have uh, kits available in all colorways, all of them, all six of them. Limited quantities, but at this point we're stocked. We are, and we still have fabric on the bolt, so we could make more kits if we needed to. 60 bolts. 60 bolts of new fabric. If you saw Peter's, uh, what was that, an Instagram post? Instagram post, yeah. I love how that section looks, all those colors, and yeah. all those little mini bolts. We got yeah. our own mini bolts. <laughs> it was pretty fun. So anyway, let's go and uh, let's press all this. And I'm just going to take one block at a time because my colors are so similar that I don't want to get them mixed up. So I'm going to take this over here right to the iron and the clapper. Oh, I almost went out of the house without the clapper this morning. <gasps> Kudos to my husband, Bill. He remembered? Well, don't he said, need the clapper? he says, um, don't you need the stuff that's in that bag? And uh, I said, oh, no, I don't need that stuff. But I need my clapper! <laughs> So I went into my studio and got my clapper and ran out the door. And Chloe was laying there on the floor just <laughs> pouting because I was leaving because nobody plays with her like Aunt Dawn does. I love that they're all individually made. They're not stamped out, mass produced. It's made by an individual. Are you talking about Chloe? No, I'm talking... <laughs> Talking about the clapper. Oh, you're talking about the clapper. Yeah, yeah. they are individual made. I love uh, it's that. a little cottage I industry, just love that. Um, a husband and wife team. Um, and for a while, they were having trouble getting the wool 
or getting the wool to the glue or something they were having trouble with. And so uh, that's what the holdup has been all this time. But uh, we've got some on order again. And I tell you what, I'm going to have to buy a second one because this taking it back and forth from home to here is is for the birds. Because I'll, I'll want it and it'll be here and then I take it home and then it's not here. So, alrighty, let's go back to the sewing machine. Oh, no, let's not. Let's go ahead and, and do these. Might as well. We're up. We've got the iron going. The iron's hot. The iron is on the fire. You know, they really used to put the iron on the fire. Yeah. In the fireplace. Yeah, there's a saying, one too many irons in the fire. Too many irons in the fire. Can't keep track of them all. Right. Which one's hot, which one's not. Okay. We don't have to worry about that today. We've got electricity. Now, can you imagine some of these quilts oh my goodness. that women made in the 1800s when there was no electricity? They made them in, they had to sew in the daytime, definitely, because they just couldn't sew at night. The candlelight just wasn't enough. Or if they did, and that was the only time they could, it was amazing that they still could see. I mean, when the electricity goes out at my house, I go to bed because there's just like nothing. You can't do nothing. Oh, my god! You can't use your phone. You can't use your iPad because, you know, is mine ever really, really charged? No. Uh, so it's, you know, one of those things. We're thinking about getting a generator, though. Do you have a generator here? Uh, we don't have a generator. Well, I think that'd be a nice thing to have here in Indiana. We have a lot of high winds and, you know... Coronados. Coronados. Okay, look at how fun. Look at how fun this is. You think to yourself, man, it's like a little jigsaw puzzle. And it really is. It's really like a jigsaw puzzle. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to fold this one down. And here's the fun part. The pinning. We're going to stick the pin right in the point on one side, go over to the other side and find the other point and put the pin in. Press those together, get this all lined up. Pin this one. Now you can see on this piece, it's just one piece. So I'm going to pin there. And then look what happened. For some reason, my feed dogs, if I would have pinned, this wouldn't have happened. But my feed dogs shot this one out about, oh, a sixteenth of an inch. I'm just going to let that work into my seam allowance. And now I'm going to fiddle with this. So I've got my pin in there. I know that it's right on. And so now I'm going to take a pin and I'm going to pin right on the side that goes against my feed dogs. And all my stuff is jaded. You know how I am. Okay. Now I'm getting ready to go to Texas. I've got to help um, at the warehouse they're getting new offices at the warehouse, and uh, my friend Tammy needs me to come and help her organize her office. So I said I would, and then uh, who knows what else she's going to find for me to do. I always end up making a sample or doing something fun. And... Uh, course in Texas you don't have to wear masks anywhere but I think I'll still wear my mask what do you think Peter got any advice you do you yeah that's my advice is it okay uh, you, I, do, you do what you feel is necessary I think on the airplanes you still have to wear masks uh, I leave May the 7th so I'm not quite sure that's not a Monday, that's a Thursday. 
So I won't be here that following week. Um, you can get along without me for one week. He'll be able to take a break from us. He'll be able to take a break. Get caught That's up. That's what I call it. I, I call it taking a break yeah, from us. Yeah, what they can just get caught up. And if you haven't even started yet, no big deal. Good time to start. Any time is a good time to start. Uh, it's no big deal if you're not uh, started yet. My videos are going to be there until somebody says. They don't have a beauty filter on. Take them off. <laughs> I'm going to have to show Peter what that beauty filter does. He'll be saying, why didn't we find this months ago? You know, it's kind of nice that I'm not beautiful because that would just be one more thing that I'd have to put up with. You know, being beautiful. I bet it's really rough. I wouldn't know, but I'm sure it is. It sounds like it would be high maintenance. I think it might be. I had a girlfriend. She was really beautiful. Well, I have lots of girlfriends that are beautiful. But uh, this one particular one, she was blonde. And, you know, every time we'd get into a, an elevator together, uh, you know, the men would stare. And, you know, then they would, you know, make passes at her. And I just thought to myself, I'm so lucky I'm not pretty. <laughs> That's a lot to put up with. I'm so lucky. But, I mean, it took her two hours to do her hair and makeup. For heaven's sake, she could have had a half quilt made by then. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who? Paint your face or quilt. Now, come on. If it's a choice, I'm going to go with the quilt every time. So, anyway... And you know what's nice, Peter, is that the Lord made us each individual, and um, some people are happy with the way that it turned out, and some people aren't. Now, I'm perfectly at ease with how I look, and even though I'm, I'm a chubby girl, and I call it Barbie Plus myself, but uh, it doesn't really bother me. Now, um, health-wise, I would be a lot healthier if I were... Not so overweight, but uh, I'm going to live it up while I'm here on earth. I'm going to eat mashed potatoes when I want to. But then the flip side of that is somebody could be the perfect weight, but then mentally just their mindset just chemically poisons their body. Mm. So mm. you ever think about that? Uh, no, because I've never had the problem. <laughs> I've never been the perfect weight. Um Okay, now look what happens here when I press. I'd rather be mentally fit than physically fit. There That's you all I'm go. saying. That's a That's good way I'm to saying. put it. I'd rather be mentally fit than physically fit. I like the way you said that, Peter. That was good. We should cross stitch that on a pillow. Because the other day I was walking Goldie around the pasture. Goldie's not your wife, is she? No. No, who no. Is? it's Who's a neighbor's Goldie? horse. Okay. So I was walking the neighbor's horse around the pen. And then I was like, oh, well, let's, let's work on the trot. So then I picked up my pace and I just have her in halter beside me. And then, so I run around and whoa, that was the hardest, most exhausting, strenuous activity. Really? Yeah. I barely made it. So you, oh, I thought maybe the horse was So I'm not trouble. very, no, I'm not very physically fit. <laughs> you were the stud and he was the. <laughs> no, she's. Okay. I want to point this out. So some little um, little stray threads got caught in my seam. I don't want to neglect those. No, I don't want to leave those. I want to get those off of there. Because if I should give that to my quilter and that thread get quilted in to the, all those quilting stitches, it would be mighty difficult to get that out. And so when I give my quilt to my quilter, I want my seams to be really nice and clean. So here we go. Now we're going to put the last little bit on. Now this block has a lot going on. A lot going on. But really all it is is half square triangles, squares, and rectangles. Half square triangles, squares, and rectangles. And when you put this third piece on, both seams have points. 
So you've got to pay close attention to that. I put the pin in. I like to snug that pin right in so I know it's right in the center there. And then I'm going to bring these up. Now these blocks are only like, uh, I think they're two and three quarters of an inch. And again, because I didn't pin, I have my feed dogs has moved my fabric. I'm going to work that into my seam. I'm not going to worry about it. Bring this over here. Make sure that that's nice and centered. See how that one was real, that one came out real nice. Ooh, don't poke yourself. If they could make a straight pins. Okay, now, Peter, if you want to be rich, this is the way you do it. You make a straight pin that is sharp enough to go through the fabric, but not sharp enough to poke your skin. You'd be a millionaire. You'd be like the Clampets. Do you remember the Clampets? Do you even know who the Clampets are? You're so young. I don't know. You don't know who the Beverly Hillbillies are? Uh-uh. Come on, Peter. For uh -huh. sure. Oh, you've got that devilish grin uh -huh. on your face. You do know who no, they are. No, I know. Is it a show? It is a show. I'll have to look it up on YouTube. Yeah. They had a cement pond. Jeez. <laughs> Why did they have a cement pond? Well, they were from Kentucky, and they moved to Beverly Hills, and their mansion, because they struck oil in Kentucky. Oh, see? okay. And so they moved to Beverly Hills, and in Beverly Hills, their mansion had a, a built-in swimming pool. And they called it the Cement Pond, because they had never seen a swimming pool before. It's a Cement Pond. It was a Cement Pond. I need to get one of those there, Cement Ponds. Yeah. Though in Indiana, it's not much use. We don't have a lot of weather that really gets hot enough. Just one week. Uh, to have a Cement Pond. One week. Yeah. And so, and they take a lot of maintenance. You know, those... those. I just uh, go outside and just take the hose and put it on my forehead, my neck, yeah. my shoulders, and then I'm good. Yeah. Or, or when it hits 100 degrees, I just take one of those spray bottles with cold water uh -huh. and just spray that. And that, that will cool you down rather quickly. You know what my mom used to do? She What'd used do? to take um, uh, ice water in a bucket out to the garden with her and she had a couple washcloths, and she'd rotate the washcloths. She'd put one in the ice bucket, and then she'd take one and wring it out and put it around her neck. Now, that's brilliant. And then when that one stopped being cool, she'd go and get the other one, and she'd just keep trading them back and forth. Now, today, they have those squishy packs that you can squish and put around, you know? But I just thought of something. What did you think of? I was watching this TV show, and it uh -huh. was about something to do with... Uh, bars and um like bars where you go drink yeah that kind of bar yeah it was okay. one of those tv shows about bars uh -huh. and they were use they had problems with um they had a problem with women that were fighting in the bar oh no and so it was a legal issue to put your hands on a woman to break up the bar fight right so what the this person who who's the host of the show he recommended all you do is you just take washcloths, put them in the freezer, and if you need to break break up a, a lady bar fight, you just put that on the back of their neck. <laughs> That'll cool them down. That cools them down <laughs> real quick. See, my mom, she knew what oh, she was doing, didn't she? She did. And you can swap flies with it, too. With the cloth? With the cloth. Okay. You gotta be fast, though. You gotta be fast. All right. Now I have the blocks done. Remember, I'm making uh, four of these and eight of these. But for time's sake, we're just going to make one of each. You guys are pretty smart. And I know you'll know how to do it. And then, after you get all the blocks made and all of them pressed, and you're so proud of them because all the points joined, this has got a lot of points. Let me point that out. 
<laughs> I can see all the points right behind you. Okay, one thing I want to tell you is if you get one of these irons, these, how do you say that, Peter? O-L-I-S-O. -O. Alyssa? Alyssa. If you get one of these, you know when you pick it up, it the feet go up. See, there's feet. It's got feet. This is a foot, and that's a foot right there. So when you sit it down, it pops back up. But when you go someplace and they don't have an iron like that, and you're used to just sitting your iron, you're going to have a little spot right there that's in the shape of your iron. Because you're going to forget. Because I don't have one of these at home. And I keep thinking, oh, i got to set that iron up. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> okay. Let's that's a see. fancy heel-toe iron. That's a heel-toe iron. Okay. Now, this is going to go towards like this. And there's going to be four of them. Okay. And then this one is going to go like this. And there's going to be eight of them. And they go all the way around the outside. And these four go on the inside. So this one has to go. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. That one goes there. Oh, wouldn't it be so nice if I'd move the book over so where I could see it? Thank you, Peter. That one goes there. And this one goes like this. Is that right? Yes, because... No, that's not the... Yeah, that's right. Do, 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 do. Oh, yep, they do, they do, they do. Okay, so this goes like that. And this one goes like that. And it makes these little spots of color. So this other one will go here, like this. And it'll make that little butterfly, butterfly uh, motif. And this one will go here. And remember this? We'll make that, uh, uh, fly, excuse me, flying geese unit. So see if you have that one going like that, and this one over here going like that. That makes that flying geese unit. Which is supposed to be like this. Because the flying geese is going to fly, this is the nose of the goose. I always wondered. Yeah. I didn't know if that was the nose or the tail. Nope, that's the nose, I think. Could you imagine doing this quilt, finishing it, and then saying, you know what, I liked making that block so much that I want to use that flying geese for an entire quilt border? Uh-huh, that'd be awesome, huh? Yeah, I love the way the colors play uh, against each yeah, other. Yeah, they shimmer. It's almost like yeah, they're shimmering water. Yeah, I know. And so come over Does here. Does this look. block have a name? Uh, it's the big block. Okay, the big block with, with lots, lots of half of square triangles. With lots of half square triangles. <laughs> lots of points. Yeah. So see how this makes a wheel. Yeah, it makes like a pinwheel. If there's a little pinwheel here, but then this bigger section here makes like a pinwheel, and then here are the flying geese, what we were talking about. But it's made up of all those little pieces. So it's called the flying geese powering the pinwheel. Evidently. There we go. I think it's pretty awesome. And then you've got your big squares out here on the corners. So once you get your once you get your squares done, then it's just super easy. You know, you put this uh, row together, this row, this row, this row, and then you sew the rows together. So it's really an easy block, but just time consuming because the pieces are so little. You got some little hair, hairy hairs in there those off okay so that's what it's gonna look like and there's my colors what a difference what a difference in the fabrics yeah what a difference so uh, we're on block 15 this is 15 today all right get her done get her done get her done get her quilted yeah have fun with it though uh, don't Think of it as a chore because I want you to, even though it's got a lot of parts, I want you to enjoy it. And imagine if you made a whole quilt like this, 
just star after star after star. Or you know what you could do, Peter, is you could have a whole block like this and then take this fabric right here and make a block this big, cut a block that big, and alternate. Oh, that would be a cool. Would not. Oh, that would be That'd be so really cool. You could do like uh, two across with a, a plain one in the middle and then two plain ones and a, and a pieced one and then again I and love then it. again. And I you, love it. Yeah, it would be stunning. That would be, and that by itself, like, I love big pillows. Uh-huh. You know, because I can sit up and lean right. against it and oh, do cross-stitch or hand-sewing. Nice pillow. That would be an amazing pillow. That would be amazing pillow. So you could make an extra, you could come in and get extra fabric and make an extra one of these as a throw pillow for if you put it on your sofa or on your bed and make a nice so, uh, pillow for your bed. Maybe some sh uh, pillow shams. Get some extra fabric and make some pillow shams. It would be a fancy puppy quilt. Oh, if yeah. If you get a new puppy. My puppy deserves it. Yeah. My puppy deserves it. Listen, it's been a really fun journey. We're at 15. It just boggles my mind that we're on block 15. Uh, I hope that you had success with uh, 12, 13, and 14. They should have went really fast. And you should have had really great success with those because they were uh, small with not very many pieces in them. So... My favorite color is Moda. I bet you didn't know that. In case you were just tuning in. In case you were just tuning in. That's right. So come back and visit us next Monday. We'll be here for Block 16. Good luck. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. And Peter and I will uh, put our heads together and try to figure out how to answer your questions. Okay? Bye. Have a good week.